Hi, and welcome to In The Front Row, all things reactions, reviews, and interviews. My name is Jamie Lee, and today I'll be doing a review of The Last of Us, episode six, titled Kin. If you've been following along with my weekly reviews, you might've known that I missed a week last week. I thought episode three broke me. I thought I was broken. I thought my heart was crushed and I couldn't come back from it. Uh, but I continued watching, obviously. And then episode five came and they gave me that exact same heartbreak, but they threw children into the mix. And me and kids dying don't mix very well. Me and anyone dying don't really mix very well. But when you throw kids in, ah, oh, you just crush me. And I thought my heart was already crushed. Uh, anyway, totally sad episode. There were some really good moments in it. Like I totally loved seeing the World War Z like zombies just running out from underneath the ground. I know we're not supposed to call them zombies, but whatever. I'm calling them that. Uh, and I totally loved seeing that massive fucking bloater just stroll on out. And he was just massive. It was so cool to see. And he just tore Terry to shreds. And I just thought that scene was so cool. I know that makes me sound like a weirdo because I like that sort of stuff, but I don't care. I enjoy watching that. It was awesome, but I don't enjoy the heartbreak. And I really tried this week to pick my heart back up and put it back together with sticky tape. So here we are at episode six. And so I was really happy when we started episode six with a three month time jump and we see Joel and Ellie holding up these occupants of this little cottage who are like, there's like a thousand. Who's this little cycle? See, funny, laughter, I like that. Anyway, so they're holding up these people and trying to find out the whereabouts of the fireflies. There are firefly people? <laughs> <laughs> and to essentially find Tommy, Joel's brother. Why didn't you shoot him? The gun's all the way over there. You made him soup? Yeah, I did. It's cold out. You got a map Why you lost. Must have missed all the street signs in the enormous fucking forest. Holy. <laughs> These scenes were awesome, extremely funny, the quick witty jokes, the personal attacks, the banter, all of it was really fun. So these locals warned Joel and Ellie not to travel west to the river of death, uh, but despite the danger, despite the warnings, that's exactly what they went ahead and did. And these scenes... Damn. Sorry, I try way too hard to be funny and it is just not. But anyway, remember how in other weeks I talked about the cinematography and how I said the world building was really great. I love that it looks post-apocalyptic. I love that it looks aged. We see these broken cities. We see these abandoned towns. Everything just looks so good. But well, this week they went to a whole nother level. It was like completely different contrast. Everything looked stunning, like absolutely stunning. But none of it looked post-apocalyptic. None of it looked like you were in a zombie apocalypse. I know it's not zombies, whatever. I've established that, but it was all just beautiful. There was snow, the river was flowing. Everything looked so stunning. And it was super refreshing to see in a world that is so broken. It was really nice to see those scenes because it gave me a feeling of hope, I guess you could say. Right up until the moment where Joel and Ellie got surrounded by this group who were sort of investigating them to see if they were really infected, to see what they wanted, you know, coming so close to their land. And there was a moment there where I was completely panicking. They had a dog who can sniff out the infected, or maybe it can't, maybe that was just a bluff, I'm not too sure. But either way, Ellie's infected. Immune, sure, but she's infected. And I was so terrified that she was just going to get torn to shreds by this dog. I was like, oh, what's going to happen? Like, how are they going to get out of this situation? And luckily enough, in a turn of events, the dog loved her like most dogs love most people. And as it turns out, the group knows the whereabouts of Tommy Joel's brother. We then have some super fun footage of Ellie and Joel striding into this sanctuary on horsebacks. Probably shouldn't call it a sanctuary because the sanctuary on The Walking Dead was definitely not that description. But this one is that description. It is a sanctuary. People are living in this beautiful community happily all together. There's running water, there's electricity, there's livestock, there's animals, there's a movie theater for God's sake. Everything is just like normal life, but inside walls. And normally when I see that in a show, I'm hesitant because I'm like, what's the catch? Yeah, I'm normally really worried, but the fact that Tommy's brother was there Everything made me feel safe and secure and everything was fine. I felt fine for Joel and Ellie. I wasn't worried about them at all. And the reunion between Tommy and Joel was just beautiful. The relief on his face, the happiness on his face, and just the comfort that I felt him feeling was so nice. I loved it. 
after they settled in a little bit, I liked watching the dialogue between Tommy and Joel. I liked that Joel was putting up this front saying Tess was still alive, everything's fine. He's putting up this wall as he's so used to doing with everybody. And it was so different to see Tommy be the complete opposite. He was so open about everybody taking him in, how he ch wanted to change his life from the past, from where Joel and him, what they used to do and things like that. And then also admitting that he's becoming a father. So he doesn't want to take these risks that Joel used to take and be put in them dangerous situations that they were both used to being put into because obviously he's becoming a father and that's a big responsibility. So he needs to be a bit more careful. Obviously that made Joel feel very conflicted and they got into this huge fight. Meanwhile, Ellie gets freshened up with Maria. She has a shower, she gets a haircut, she gets new clothes, makes herself really comfortable or uncomfortable because she's not used to that. But it was really nice seeing this Maria lady be nice and caring towards children because I know I bring up The Walking Dead all the time and I should never compare. I'm sorry, but I do. It's my favorite show, whatever. Anyway, in The Walking Dead, Maria is Jocelyn and Jocelyn kidnaps kids. So it was really nice to see her in a motherly, uh, comforting and kind role within this community. Throughout their discussions, Ellie finds out that Joel had a daughter who, of course, we know died in episode one. Tommy and Joel apologize and make up to each other and this scene had me crying. I was so firstly happy that Joel actually got his brother back and for the first time he let his guard down and told the truth. He told about Tess' death. He told about the things that he saw on his travels to get to Tommy. He told Tommy about Ellie's immunity and how he promised to keep her safe because that was Tess's last wish. And it was just so heartwarming to finally see him have somebody that he feels safe with. He isn't trying to be a protector in that moment. He literally just wants to cry to his brother. And that was so authentic and relatable, I guess. And oh my gosh, was it not sad hearing Joel talk about his insecurities. He feels old. He feels weak. He feels like even in his dreams, he just fails in life. He fails in his dreams. All he does is just fail again, again, again. And he doesn't want to do that with Ellie. And that is completely understandable because imagine the burden that he would have knowing that this girl is the future. This girl is hope for the world post the apocalypse and it's all resting on his shoulders which are tired shoulders like oh, it was just really refreshing to hear him be so honest about himself and his insecurities i guess you could say because often in the shows the lead man is usually this strong brave hero and don't get me wrong i'm not saying joel's not i'm just saying they're also human so it's really refreshing to see them be portrayed as that to show that these strong heroic and brave characters also have normal feelings like they're afraid they don't always have the answers they don't know what to do and they feel weak or useless or helpless even though they're not they have them same feelings of self-doubt and that was really nice to see compared to the wall that we normally see Joel put up anyway he begs and convinces Tommy to take Ellie and to keep her safe because he doesn't feel like he's capable of doing that so then we move on to the scene where Joel has to tell Ellie that he's moving on before Ellie comes cuts him off because she already knows that because she already overheard and these scenes here this dialogue this acting oh. he knows the area better than i do do you give a shit about me or not of course i do then what are you so afraid of man makes me so sad this show just makes me sad for both of them i really feel for joel because he's trying to help her in his eyes from his perspective that's how he sees it he's helping her but on the other hand ellie is just a kid she's been through so much and she feels so safe with joel now they've built this relationship where she really feels safe and when she apologizes for sarah's death oh my gosh i was just crying because it it was beautiful. Ellie, this smart ass little bratty girl that is finally opening up to him. She wants to give him this cuddle. The way that she approached him, I just wanted to hug her. I'm sorry about your daughter, Joel. Everybody I have cared for has either died or left me. Everybody fucking except for you. So don't tell me that I'd be safe with somebody else because the truth is I would just be more scared. It was just heartbreaking. And to see them not comfort each other in that moment, I was like, oh my gosh, I wanted to see that. I wanted to see you guys show your 
appreciation and like care for each other. So the fact that they just ripped our hearts out again in that moment, it was very, very sad. But yeah, really sad dialogue between those two in that scene. So the following morning, Joel changes his mind and they apologize in their own way, not with words, because that would be weird for them. But they basically agree that they're going to go to the labs together because they're safest together and happiest together, which was really, really sweet. So we see them trek off together on this horse and along their way, their trip is just beautiful. Joel teaches Ellie how to shoot a sniper rifle. Those moments were really cute. Ellie asks a ton more questions. They talk about their dreams and what they would want if they weren't living in an apocalyptic world. And for the first time from the both of them, I felt like they had hope because they'd just seen what a normal community was like. They'd just seen the first signs of normality. If Ellie could change the world, that's how life could be again. So they get to the medical labs where the fireflies are supposed to be, but it is abandoned and overrun by monkeys of all things. Loki, I would have been super excited to see those monkeys, just saying. But anyway, they find out where the fireflies have headed to next and then get ambushed, I guess you could say. One of the guys in the group approaches Joel and he just snaps his neck. And that was incredible to watch because a, you saw his strength, and B, he just talked about how he didn't feel he was capable. He didn't feel like he could do the things that he needed to do to save Ellie, and then bam, he does it. Instinct takes over, and he just wanted to care for Ellie. But it turns out that he got shivved in the process, so they jumped on the horse. Meanwhile, the other members of the group are trying to track them down and kill them, but Joel pulls the blade out and they ride off to safety. Well, I wouldn't say that they rode away to safety, but they did ride away to get safe from that group until Joel passes out, falls off the horse, and we have that beautiful moment with Ellie where she is broken. I can't fucking do this without you. I don't know where the fuck I'm going, what the fuck I'm gonna do. Joel, please. That moment there is completely sad. So sad. I don't think Joel is dead. I haven't played the video games, as you guys know, so I don't know. Maybe he could be. And this show surprises me all the time, so I would not be surprised if they pull something like that. But I just feel like there wasn't enough emotional build up for that death scene. There was emotional build up, and obviously, I think he's going to die. He's always holding his heart. And uh, there's moments where they really try to show him that he's weak and he's old and he really is at the last stages of life, I guess you could say. That sounds really dramatic, but you know what I mean. They're really trying to show, oh, he could die, he could die, he could die, and then bam, he dies. It just seems a little bit too sudden, so I don't think that's going to happen now. Again, that could be wrong. And I certainly hope I'm wrong because I really don't want him to die, and I don't want him to die like this. If he does have to die, I thought it would be a little more heroic. I thought it would be a little more like of a sacrificing himself sort of death, and I feel like I want that with most characters in any show that I watch, which is really, that's pretty high expectations. So yeah, I don't know why I have that. But anyway, so I hope he's not dead. The only disappointment that I have with this episode is the fact that he pulled the shiv out, like common sense in any first aid course that you do they say leave it in whatever it is wherever it is leave it in and go get medical help so i was like no they could have rode back back to the sanctuary there was medical stuff there and then he could have pulled it out and you know got patched up or whatever so i was like oh no silly bad move but overall i really enjoyed this episode visually it was the best one that i have watched i thought it looked stunning from start to finish every scene was just captivating to me but the biggest positives from this episode to me was the acting when Joel and Tommy were having their little moments together and he was really opening up and then the moments with Joel and Ellie where they were breaking up, I guess you could say, everything was just so perfectly scripted and the acting was so authentic. It didn't feel forced, it didn't feel fake and I felt it. Like I was crying in both of those, I've cried in every fucking episode of this show. Let me put that out there. I fucking hate this show because I've cried in every fucking episode of this show. But anyway, those moments there were so beautiful, even though they were very sad. And as I said, this episode is the one that really gave me hope. I felt like after we get a cure, this is what normal life could look like. This is what a happy life could look like within those walls, but outside of the walls eventually. So for the first time, I felt hope for the people living within this post-apocalyptic world in The Last of Us. I can't believe that there's only three more episodes left. I'm a little bit sad about that, but I'm very excited to watch next week's episode to see what happens from here. Is Joel alive? What does Ellie do? 
ah, what happens next? Let me know what you guys thought of this episode in the comments. And if you like this video, please give it a like. And if you're not already, please subscribe to my channel and then head on over to my Instagram and give me a follow over there as well, please. Okay, sweet as. Have a good day. Bye.